Hello from Seoul. Do you like fried chicken? What about curry? Fried chicken? Good. Curry? Nice. Then what if I combine those two? I know it's so hard to believe, but it's a real thing. Alright, let's get started. Today, we are making katsu curry, ultra crispy fried chicken with nice and creamy Japanese curry. Is there anything you wouldn't love? No, impossible, but you might think it's difficult to make. But don't worry about it. As always, with me, nothing's gonna be a problem. So buckle up, let's make the curry first. For this, you will need onion, carrot, potato, and Japanese curry mix. Of course, I could make it completely from scratch with various spices and that could be more delicious. But let me give you two reasons why I don't do that. First, you don't want to buy all this stuff and I'm pretty sure you're not gonna use it again after this recipe. No? Is that just me? Then sorry about that. Second, getting one of these will be a lot cheaper but it doesn't mean we have to compromise the flavor because I won't let that happen. So it's your choice, expensive and complicated one or something quick and delicious. Alright, let's prep the onion first. Slice 4 large onions as thin as you can. Just like when you make a French onion soup, we're gonna be sauteing these onions and they're gonna take a little while to cook. So try to cut these as thin as you can. Otherwise, it can take more than 3 hours. And if that happens, I'm not responsible. Next, get yourself a carrot and 3 potatoes. And then cut them into nice big chunks. Now, some of you might wanna ask, Aaron, aren't they supposed to be pretty? I think they should float in the curry like a stew. I'm so glad you brought that up. Today, we're not gonna make that typical Japanese curry, which looks like a little stew. We're gonna make a really creamy and velvety curry, which means we're gonna puree this later. So don't worry about the shape. Now take out your pot, add 3 tablespoons of oil and heat that over medium heat. Once it gets nice and hot, add all the onions and saute for 40 minutes or until deep caramelized. During that time, if it's likely to burn, it's okay to reduce the heat to low or add a small amount of water. Don't worry about it, cooking is not math. That's totally fine. Meanwhile, in another wok or pan, add 1 tablespoon of cooking oil and place it over medium heat. Once that's hot, add all the carrots and potatoes and let them cook for about 10 minutes or until nice and golden brown. This little detail will add a ton of flavor and that's gonna take your curry to the next level. Once your onions are beautifully deep caramelized, add 3 tablespoons of tomato paste, 1 tablespoon of cumin powder and let that cook for about 1 minute. Keep adding 8 cups of water, 1 and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon powder, 1 tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, potatoes, carrots, and give it a good stir. Cover with the lid and let that simmer for about 30 minutes over medium-low heat. When time's up, remove it from the heat and add 220 grams of Japanese curry mix, 2 tablespoons of unsalted butter, and give it a good stir until it's well combined. And take an immersion blender and blend this until it's nice and smooth. What? You don't have this? Don't worry about it. You could also use a blender, but if you do it when it's hot, it's gonna explode like a grenade. So please wait until it's completely cooled down. I told you. So if that happens, I'm not responsible. Now all you need to do is put it on a gentle heat. And there you have it, your creamy Japanese curry. This time, let's work on the chicken katsu. When the curry meets this ultimate crispy chicken cutlet, trust me, it's gonna be fantastic. For this, you will need chicken, AP flour, eggs, and some panko breadcrumbs. Now some of you might wanna ask, Aaron, can I skip that panko? Sadly, my answer is no, because this will bring that amazing amazing crispiness in your mouth. Just like Tokyo Treat and Sakuraku bring joy to your doorstep. Tokyo Treat is a monthly snack subscription box straight from Japan. It is filled with up to 20 of the latest and most exclusive snacks that are only available in Japan. For example, if you open the box, you can see some limited edition or seasonal flavored Japanese snacks. And this month's theme is a Sakura picnic. You are looking for some more traditional snacks? Don't worry about it. With Sakurako, you can experience local and authentic Japanese snacks from artisan snack makers. And this month's theme is matcha and mochi. Also, the boxes come with a different theme every month, which means you can never ever get tired of them. 
What? You're kind of worried about getting local snacks because of the language? Don't worry about it. Tokyo Treat and Sakuraku provide a booklet in the box. It contains all the information about the snakes, snake makers, and even interesting cultural stories about Japan. If you're interested in getting one of these, go to the link in my description and use my code ANC. You will get $5 off your first order. You want to experience real Japan? Wherever you are, Tokyo Treat and Sakuraku will be with you. Thank you for sponsoring this video, Tokyo Treat and Sakuraku. All right, let's prep the chicken. To be honest, I kind of prefer chicken thighs, but today, I think I have to use chicken breast because of someone. If you're married, listen. Happy wife, happy life. But don't get me wrong, it's not because I'm afraid of Claire. True story. If you look at your chicken breast, it's not even in thickness, which means when it's deep fried, some parts might get overcooked, but others might get undercooked. So let's make it even. How? Just put it in a plastic bag and pound it up with a meat mallet, saucepan, wine bottle, or anything that works for you. But don't make this poor little thing into mush. It's not your axe. Once it gets nice and flat, season both sides with salt and pepper, but not too much, because we're gonna have with amazing curry anyhow. Now for the breading station, take out some trays and fill them with flour, a couple of eggs, and some panko breadcrumbs. Grab a piece of chicken breast and coat it in the flour. Make sure it gets all around and shake off the excess. Move on to the beaten eggs and then in the breadcrumbs. Here, you need to cover it a good amount of breadcrumbs and gently press it down so that every single side is totally coated with panko. Otherwise, you might end up with some naked chicken breast that nobody wants. Alright, the chicken is ready to go. Let's get cooking. Fill the wok or pot with enough oil and heat it to 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches the temperature, add in the chicken and cook for about 6 to 8 minutes. Here, do not overcrowd the pot and do this in batches. Like one or two at a time would be perfect. Otherwise, it will lower the oil temperature too quickly, which means you can get that ultimate crispy chicken katsu at the end. Once your chicken is beautifully golden brown and crispy, take it out and let it rest on a cooling rack. And then just repeat with the remaining chicken pieces. That's it. While that's resting, let's chop some green onion for garnish. And then carefully slice your beautifully cooked chicken katsu. Alright, everything is ready. Let's put it all together. Get yourself a plate and add a bowl of cooked rice. And then pour in some of our gorgeous curry and place the chicken on top. Of course you could serve it now, but if you want to feel like you're eating at a Japanese restaurant, add some Japanese pickled scallions and ginger. Trust me, they're really gonna boost up the flavor. Last but not least, garnish with green onion. Then our katsu curry is done. Alright, let's call our taste tester. Claire. Woo! It looks so beautiful! Wow, I like it. Chicken katsu! Curry! 파리가 뭔가 덩어리지지 않고 되게 매끈매끈한 이 엄청 고급진 느낌이 팍 생긴다. 뭐부터 먹어봐야 될지 모르겠는데 그래도 커리부터 먹어보겠다. I'm super excited. Let's try. It. Oh. 너무 부드러워서 뭔가 수프 먹는 그런 느낌이야. 그러면 이제 메인 이벤트로 가야지. 이놈 큰 놈으로 가겠다. Mm. Ready? Mm. Mm. Wow. Igo jigo jin. Mm. 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 그리고 이 조합 누가 생각했는지 모르겠는데 카레랑 너무 잘 어울려. 약간 카레 자체가 약간은 그 매콤한 맛이 약간 있잖아. 그게 그 느끼할 수도 있을 만한 그 부분을 확잘 잡아주는 느낌? 그런 느낌이야. 그리고 그 바삭한 치킨 카츠랑 부드러운 아주 매끄러운 카레가 약간은 대조가 되면서 너무 식감이 재밌다. 와 예술인데? 음. This time let me try with rice. 카렌 밥에 빠지면 안 되지. 와, here we go. Let's try. 음, 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 음. 아, 음, 너무 맛있잖아. 
나 원래 돈가스 같은 것도 이렇게 눅눅해지는 거 싫어가지고 카츠동도 별로 안 좋아했었잖아요. 근데 이거는 파리 위에 놨는데 전혀 쏘게 하지가 않네. 진짜 이건 그냥 바삭하면 온전하게 유지가 되네. 막 일부러 푹 담글 필요가 없는 것 같아. 위에는 바삭하게 유지시키고 아래 카레랑 같이 샥 먹는 게 그게 포인트인 것 같아. It is super delicious, so I strongly recommend this. But if you still hesitate to try this because it sounds like a too much work for you, how about making the first day curry day, second day chicken katsu day, third day put it all together and enjoy the chicken katsu curry day. You will thank yourself later. So good. <laughs> Today, I showed you how to make katsu curry. How was it? It's not that difficult, right? Once you try it, you will notice it's way easier than you think. I guarantee it. So stop worrying and try it. If you do, you will taste the best Japanese dish that you ever had. Alright, this is it for today and I'll see you next time.